an American company Moderna has released first batch of vaccine against novel coronavirus against this SARS-2 coronavirus. Uh, this vaccine is actually in phase one clinical testing. What I mean by this is that before our drug is launched, uh, firstly it is discovery and preclinical phase. In this phase, uh, it is tested uh, in labs and on experimental animals uh, for observing to observe any adverse effects in animals, right? And after that, human trials or clinical trials start, starting from phase one, uh, this drug or vaccine, it is given to very small number of volunteers, 20 to 100 volunteers, and they are observed to see if any adverse effect developed. Then gradually, bigger population is chosen, 100 to 300 volunteers in phase two, and 300 to 3,000 volunteers in phase three. And if all goes well, it can be finally approved by FDA for public use. Then it is marketed for public use and it is not. So right now this vaccine, it is in phase one. So it may take up to year or so before it would be available for general public, right? The interesting thing about this vaccine which is uh, launched by Moderna is that it is mRNA vaccine. Unlike the traditional vaccines that are either live attenuated virus or protein subunit vaccine, it is mRNA vaccine and mRNA or messenger RNA as you know, uh, it codes for, it codes for unfused, stable unfused S protein or spike protein of coronavirus. And by the way, this vaccine is called mRNA1273, right? So what happens is that, as I have told you in the lecture, visual lecture on le replicative cycle of coronavirus, that this, here is the coronavirus and here is its S protein. <coughs> what will happen that this through its S protein it will bind with ACE2 receptor of alveolar type 2 alveolar pneumocyte and this will lead to fusion of this viral membrane viral envelope with cell membrane and it will enter into cell and it will infect the cell. So with this vaccine we target this step right so we target this step with this vaccine. So today we will discuss that how this mRNA vaccine will work. Hello, I am Dr. Azar from medicovisual.com. Welcome to this visual lecture. So this vaccine, let's suppose uh, this vaccine is given through intramuscular injection, through intramuscular injection in deltoid so I am gonna enlarge this part and we will see that what is going on inside this deltoid. So here is the vaccine and it has been dropped uh, inside the interstitial space, the space between cells, right? So this vaccine, it actually contains mRNA which is encapsulated by lipid nanoparticle. So mRNA is present inside a lipid nanoparticle. Why do we need this lipid nanoparticle? Because if we give, insert a naked mRNA, if we inject a naked mRNA, what will happen that there are some hostile RNAs is present in the extracellular environment which, which will digest this. <laughs> RNAs mean RNA digesting enzyme, they will digest this. Secondly, mRNA, we need mRNA inside the cell to function, right? There is no need, there is no use of mRNA outside the cell. It may even trigger immune response against itself which will render the vaccine useless. So mRNA by itself cannot enter into cell. So this lipid nanoparticle it will be used as a delivery vehicle. It will be used as a delivery vehicle to safely deliver this mRNA inside the cell 
it will release the mRNA inside the cell and it will be digested here. So now we got the mRNA. This mRNA vaccine, it actually imitates an actual virus infection. Just like an actual virus, which actual coronavirus, which infects the cell and uh, injects its mRNA inside the cell. It is acting just like that. It is so natural, right? But the difference is that it codes only for S protein. It is not coding for any other pathogenic proteins. So of course it cannot cause the disease, but it can trigger immune response, right? So here is the mRNA. It will use cellular protein synthesizing machinery. So to form what? To form S protein or spike protein of coronavirus. This spike protein will be processed by intracellular proteases and this after processing the fragments of S protein they will be presented on MHC1 protein they will be presented on a special receptors called MHC1 actually all nucleated cells have to present all nucleated cell have to present or express their cellular proteins on MHC1 receptor this is to show the immune system that what is going on what protein is being synthesized inside these cellular factories of course normal cell normal cell will present normal cellular proteins on mhc1 and viral infected cell or in this case vaccine infected cell will it will of course present mhc on mhc1 it will present viral proteins or fragments of S protein in this case. Some of this, some of this uh, proteins will be presented on MHC1, while most of it, it will be packed by uh, Golgi apparatus, processed by endoplasmic reticulum, and will be packed by Golgi apparatus. And these S proteins, they will be secreted outside the cell, right? So they will be secreted outside the cell. Now let me tell you something interesting. Billions of cells, billions of cytotoxic cells with millions of different specificities are wandering in your body. They are wandering in plasma and they are trying to find their target. Somehow a cytotoxic or killer cell, cytotoxic T cell, which may be specific for this S protein it may come across this S protein randomly and it will bind with its T cell receptor with its TCR or T cell receptor it will bind with this MHC1 bound S protein fragment MHC1 bound antigen and it will become active the cytotoxic T cell it is also called CD8 positive lymphocyte because it is a lymphocyte which expresses CD8 protein, right? So it is cytotoxic T cell. Cyto means cell, toxic mean killer. So it is cell killer. We will see what it does. So this cytotoxic T cell will recognize it and will become active, it will become happily active. Not only cytotoxic T cells are present here in our body, we also have B cells. So B cells or B lymphocyte they are not fussy about MHC1 so they can directly recognize they can directly recognize the antigen and become active right so cytotoxic T cell which are responsible for cell mediated immune response and B cell which are responsible for humoral immune response or antibody mediated Im immune response so once they will bind with this antigen b cell they will bind with this antigen they may become activated and they may convert into plasma cell and they will secrete antibodies specific specific for this s protein right now we also have some macrophages wandering here and there 
So these macrophages, they will recognize these foreign proteins. What, these, what are these foreign proteins? These S proteins. They will recognize these S proteins and they will engulf these S proteins. And then they will present these S proteins on MHC type 2 receptors, not on MHC1, on MHC2 receptor. MHC1 receptor, here is the MHC1 receptor and they are pre pre present on, they are expressed on all nucleated cell. While MHC2, they are expressed only on professional antigen presenting cell, for example, dendritic cell and macrophages. MHC1, they are involved in expressing endogenous proteins. While MHC2, they are involved in expressing exogenous proteins. What are endogenous proteins? Endogenous proteins are those proteins which are synthesized and processed inside the cell. They are synthesized inside the cell. While exogenous proteins are those which are taken up by macrophages from the extracellular environment. From from the extracellular environment they are engulfed and presented on MHC type 2. So as soon as they will express these antigens, antigenic fragments on MHC type 2, as protein fragments on MHC type 2, they will take them to helper T lymphocyte and here come the master of immune system. Helper T lymphocyte is master regulator of immune system or we also call it that it is orchestrator of immune system it is most important cell in immune system so helper t lymphocyte is also called cd4 positive t lymphocyte because it express cd4 receptor so it's with its t cell receptor it will recognize and bind with it will recognize and bind with MHC2 presented antigen, MHC2 bound antigen. Now what it will do? Now it will give some orders. Now it will give some orders to cytotoxic T cell as well as B cell. It will release certain cellular, it will release certain cellular messenger or cellular growth factors or we call them cytokines. It will release cytokines which will cause growth and proliferation of cytotoxic T cell as well as growth and proliferation of B cells. It will cause, it will cause what? It will cause clonal proliferation. And what I mean by clonal proliferation is that it will make lots and lots of copies of this specific cytotoxic T cell. It will make lots of copies of cytotoxic T cell that is specific for a particular antigen. It will make copy of cytotoxic T cell which is specific for this antigen, this S protein antigen. And it will also cause clonal proliferation of B cell and it will also release cytokines which act on itself and it will make copy of itself as well. So when it will make copy of itself, it will lead to massive immune response and it will lead to amplification of all this immune process. Now also it will activate these cells, cytotoxic T cells and B cells. So what will happen? that cytotoxic T cell will release granzymes and perforins that will destroy these vaccine vaccine infected cells right and after activation B cells will be converted some of these B cells will be converted into plasma cells and plasma cells are antibody generating factories so plasma cell will do what it will generate lots of antibodies which are specific for s proteins now these are the affected cells the cytotoxic t cell and this cell plasma cell these are affected cells they are doing something in response to this 
but some of these cells out of these clones they will remain dormant and they will act when a subsequent infection occur uh, when subsequent exposure to antigen occur when an actual virus infection occur then these these dormant cell will become active and they will do something they will produce immune response these dormant cells are called memory cells so we have memory t cells we have memory cytotoxic t cells we have memory b cells and we will have lots of s protein specific antibodies and we also will have memory helper t cell so we have got all these things right so what will happen when an actual virus enters so when actual virus tries to infect these antibodies will come to our rescue and they will prevent fusion of this s protein with ace2 receptor of type 2 alveolar pneumocyte it will prevent fusion right also these antibodies they may trigger uh, complement system and some other pathway i won't go into detail and they will they may directly cause killing of this viral virus particle right and even if somehow this virus it may escape this antibody mediated immune response and it, it, it enters the cell and it start generating and expressing its viral proteins and it start making lots of copies but because we have memory cytotoxic t cell they will quickly and swiftly react and before this virus can release these as assemble and release these virus particle outside the cell cytotoxic t cell will quickly come and destroy this cell and everything inside it so of course viral will not virus will not be able to infect so in this way due to humoral response or antibody response as well as cell mediated response this vaccine can prevent the actual virus infection actual corona virus infection now here i would love to highlight another point that how this mrna vaccine is better than traditional protein subunit vaccine let's suppose if we give an s protein directly we are not giving mrna we are giving s protein of coronavirus directly it may be recognized by b cell and it may be engulfed and recognized by macrophages and antibodies will be produced but because it is not mrna can it be presented on mhc type 1 course not because mhc type 1 is only concerned with presentation of endogenous protein and this is not endogenous protein this is exogenous protein so will there be a significant cell mediated immune response or cytotoxic immune response of course not so this immune response cell mediated immune response will be negligible but of course we will have humoral or antibody mediated immune response as well as of course we will have helper t lymphocyte right so because we are not getting a strong cell mediated immune response it is not an ideal vaccine this protein subunit vaccine because cell mediated immune response is very important in clearing viral infections in clearing virus from our body right now what about mrna vaccine versus live attenuated virus vaccine live attenuated virus is basically a living virus a live virus but it is weakened it is so much so weakened so much so that it is no more pathogenic it it can it can trigger immune response but it cannot cause the disease we use certain chemicals to we weaken this virus 
Now the problem with this is that in certain rare circumstances, especially in um, immunocompromised people, it can suddenly turn into pathogenic strain and it can cause disease. So that is a rare side effect, especially uh, it has been observed with polio vaccine, right? So this was about this vaccine. Now, it, this vaccine, it seems quite promising, but as of now, its safety profile is not clearly as elucidated, right? So, thank you for watching this lecture. If you like this visual lecture, please like this video, please subscribe to my channel, and please give your precious comments regarding this lecture. Thank you so much for watching this lecture. So 